My name is Kate Rain Scoldy, and I'm going to be talking to you tonight about my adventures uh, playing and making experimental and new games around the world, and uh, what I learned about innovation. So I've been playing video games for as long as I can remember, but um, my journey as a game designer really began in 2005 when a good friend of mine, David Fono, uh, finished a stint at Microsoft Research as an intern. And uh, while he was there, he played something called the Microsoft Intern Game, or just the game. And in this game, they basically every year release the interns um, into Seattle and surrounding area to spend a sleepless weekend playing a game in the streets and solving puzzles and unraveling mys mysteries. So for his, the year that um, he played, the game was called Illumin, and it was all about the fate of a giant orbital mind control laser. So he was really, really taken by this kind of experience that he had, and he wanted to bring it back to Toronto, where we're both from. And so within a year um, of his playing the game, um, he had assembled a crack team of game designers, um, artists, technologists, including myself, to create uh, Toronto's first alternate reality game, which was called Tour Game Waking City. And um, it took place in the streets of Toronto. Um, and a very serendipitous thing happened to me th that same year. I was in New York on, um, for a work trip, and I was invited to play um, Cruel to be Kind, which was um, an early pervasive game by um, well-known game designers, Jane McGonigal and Ian Bogost. And um, basically it mixed together technology, um, play, and streets. And um, what really kind of struck me about this game is it was, and all of the other things I've been seeing is it was really this new way of thinking about playing games beyond, but also informing um, video games, which is what we usually think of when we think of games. And so these are some of the kind of different ways to play that are now emerging. Um, some of them you've probably heard of, maybe some of you haven't. Um, the thing that I really, really liked about um, uh, the Cruelty Be Kind is I discovered it was actually part of a kind of larger community of, a larger kind of con connection, a network of play communities around the world. Um, that centered around festivals. So the one that um, Come Out and Play was in was, or sorry, the one that Come, Cruel to Be Kind was in was Come Out and Play, which runs every year in New York and San Francisco. Um, so I was really intrigued by this point and kind of hooked. And um, so David and I started creating more games, and we um, started getting invited to festivals around the world, including Hide and Seek, which was in London, and um, got to play all sorts of really interesting and exciting and innovative games. And we uh, formed Atmosphere Industries, which is a game design nonprofit. And we were most recently, um, a little bit closer to home for me these days, um, invited to play at a festival in Melbourne and do a game there. And what was really cool about this festival is that it's not so much coming from technology or game design, but most of the people involved are actually from theater um, and improv. So it kind of shows you how really interdisciplinary and um, inclusive and interesting these can be. So the latest thing for me is that I've just started working at FTI as the new director of interactive programs. And so my job there basically is to be thinking about all of these things and thinking about how can we kind of bring this, um, these communities of play to Perth and how can I foster the um, existing exciting and interesting things that are happening and help them to grow even further. So I kind of step back and think about, well, you know, what is, what is innovation and what's required? And some of the things that are really important are risk-taking, um, embracing the unexpected, experimentation, things that um, maybe taking risks can be a little bit scary. So how do we foster these things? And I really, really kind of take the play communities that I've been involved with as a model for this because they're really not so much just communities of play, but communities of innovation. And if you look at where these... Um, these communities have really um, taken off in San Francisco, London, um, New York, um, and Melbourne as well, um, you see that they're really kind of connected in and informing and also coming out of um, you know, really creative spaces. Um, GDC just happened in San Francisco, which is the biggest game design conference. So um, I ask, okay, well, how, how are they doing this? How, are, how, are, how is the innovation happening? And um, what they're doing is before the festivals every year that happen, they have these sand pits or recesses or play tests where people come together and play each other's unfinished games to give each other feedback. So we've started doing this in, in Perth. Um, it's called Play at Perth, and it's been happening since last year. And it's open for anybody to come and play games, but also to test games. So it's this really kind of open space um, to support collaboration and innovation and experimentation. Um, and uh, the next one is happening on June 7th, if you would like to come. And the philosophy behind um, 
that informs these play tests and that informs play at Perth and also what I'm working on at FTI is to be, it also comes from kind of this really playful, playful um, culture, which is to be really inclusive, um, really supportive and constructive and positive and really experimental and innovative, which I think is really important for supporting innovation to have a really kind of positive, supportive network. So the magic circle is, I think, also really in, in, um, supports this philosophy. Um, and the magic circle is this kind of game design idea where that when we play games, because we're in this magic world of playing games, we're more open to doing things that are perhaps more scary or um, perhaps more risky that we wouldn't do normally. So you can see that the magic circle also informs the way that people make and design games um, because what they're doing is they're actually coming and playing unfinished games with each other and they're kind of showing things and, and making mistakes and, and potentially having failures. But those failures aren't failures. They're tremendous learning experiences and learning opportunities that they can then go back to iterate and make their games better. And so we see that when we play together in, these, in this way, it makes kind of the process of innovation, of um, making mistakes, of, of embracing the unexpected, of potentially failing, um, something that is a lot less scary and actually fun, and uh, something that I think can, we can enable to become a more common thing. So my kind of hope is that by encouraging playful communities in Perth, um, that can become contagious, the playfulness can become contagious, and it can be something that kind of gets taken up uh, more broadly in Perth. So I want to leave you with a kind of call to action, which is that if you're interested in getting involved, um, we want to have our own festival here, just like they have in um, New York, London, um, and uh, Melbourne. So if you want to get involved, you have, you have ideas, you want to become a game designer, you're curious about being a game designer, please come out and uh, join us. The next one is um, June 7th, and the address is playatperth.org. Thank you.